everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video we'll be doing part two in my series on the Age of Legends. We'll be diving into the timeline of events that we know of from the Age of Legends all the way up to its eventual fall. If you haven't watched the first video in the series, go ahead and do that now and then come back and watch this video. So diving right in, let's throw up a spoiler warning. This video will carry a spoiler warning of yellow. I'm going to go through the timeline of events that we know of from the Age of Legends to its eventual end. And so this section is going to be a little bit more reddish than my other yellow videos in terms of spoilers, but nothing major. I'm going to be giving some backstory on characters that we see later in the novels, but nothing about their actions or the events of the main novels. So watch at your own risk. So we will start our timeline around 400 years prior to the end of the Age of Legends. We aren't sure how long the Age lasted, but it was most likely many thousands of years. We don't have information about that time, but starting around 400 years before the breaking of the world, we have some basic information. At this time, Luz Theron Telamon was born. Exactly one day later, Barad Bel Madar, who would later become the Forsaken Demon Dread, was born. Also around this time, Joar Adam Nasosin was born in the port city of Shorel. He would go on to become a moderately famous musician during the Age of Legends before later becoming the Forsaken Asmodian. Around 300 before breaking, Lilin Moral, who would later become Magidian, was born. At this time, Luz Theron Telamon has risen to become first among the servants, sitting on the high seat and wearing the ring of the Tamerlan, effectively ruling the Aes Sedai. He has a position of great honor and is widely respected around the world for his great power and great accomplishments. Also around this time, Zayin Terezend, a researcher and teacher, is refused a prestigious position as a researcher at the Kolom Don. She is instead allowed to teach at the university as a basic instructor. Zayin would later become the Forsaken Masana. During this time as well, Luz Theron Telamon has an ongoing relationship with Mieran Erenale. He eventually ends the relationship because of Mieran's ambition and her loving his position and power more than him. She holds a grudge for this and she hopes to get him back. Around a hundred years before the breaking, Mieran Erenale and Bidemon, while researching at the Kolom Dawn, discover a region of the pattern containing what appeared to be an undivided source of the One Power that could be used by both men and women. Their research leads them to believe that this could be accessed and through the use of this power they believed great things would be possible even farther beyond what they could do now. They attempted to access this energy source by boring a hole into the pattern. They had actually found not a new source of power but rather the prison of the Dark One and they had bored through the pattern to give him access to the world. The resulting explosion of power of the Dark One breaking free immediately destroyed the Kolom Dawn and the Sharom, killing many people in the area. The board did not release the Dark One into the world entirely, but it did allow him to touch the world and gave him influence. At this time, Sheogul, a tranquil island in the middle of the sea, was transformed by the Dark One's touch into a desolate wasteland. This is the area of the pattern that the boar is detectable at, but not where the Dark One exists. The following period of a hundred years is referred to as the Collapse. The Dark One's influence begins to spread across a world that had known nothing but peace and prosperity. This, however, was mostly unknown to the population. There is an evil influence in the world, and people begin to become jealous, Poverty, which had been unheard of, begins to rise, and people begin to give in to a primal nature. Nothing collapsed overnight, but over the period of a hundred years, society gradually began to disintegrate piece by piece. During this time, the Hall of Servants discovers that one of the most prominent restorers in the world, Namin Demadar Moan, has been performing sadistic acts on people that she heals. She is given a choice to be bound with a binder against her sadistic desires, or be severed from the true source. She instead flees to the Dark One and is one of the first to swear oaths to the Dark One at Sheol Ghul. She takes on the name Simurak. Around ten years after the drilling of the boar, Aes Sedai Kemeril Meridim Nindar, an extremely well-respected therapist and healer of the mind, drastically begins to alter her lifestyle from simplicity to hedonism due to the influence of the Dark One. Some years later, she joins the forces of the Shadow, although she keeps her allegiance secret for years. At this time, the world was beginning to notice the changes in people, and great conferences were called to discuss the problem and how to combat the dissolution of society. At one of these conferences, the most prominent philosopher and writer in the world, Elon Morin Tedrani, speaks at the conference, and rather than discussing ways to combat the changes, he announces to the world the nature of the Dark One, and his inevitable victory, in his view, 
and announces his intent to join the Dark One. He then becomes the Forsaken Ishamayel. This event was very profound as he was so well respected and his joining of the Shadow inspired others to do the same. Aes Sedai and regular citizens began to pledge themselves to the Dark One in droves becoming friends of the dark. Among those inspired to join are Ishar Morad Chuain, who would later become Aganor. During the first 30 years of the Collapse, he joins the Shadow and begins to experiment in creating Shadowspawn. He is one of the world's most prominent biologists, and the freedom that he receives from the Dark One to pursue his research is why he turns. He begins to create the first Trollocs, and eventually Drakkar, Golam, and Jamara. Around 50 years after the Boar was drilled, Ival Rahman goes to the Shadow and becomes the Forsaken Balthamo. At the same time, Brutal sports begin to become popular around the world. Fighting and murder and rape and torture become more and more common as society falls apart. Ared Mosinel joins the Shadow at this time as well and becomes the Forsaken Ravine. Luz Theron, still in his position of power, meets and marries Ilyena Morella Dalisar. He is very much in love and during the ceremony, Mieren Erenel, jealous that Luz Theron did not love her, tried to disrupt the ceremony. After being scorned, she joins the Shadow and becomes the Forsaken Lanfear. Duram Liddell Cham, one of Luz Theron's friends, joins the Shadow. He had been friends with, for years with Luz Theron, and the two of them had revived the ancient art of sword fighting together. He becomes the Forsaken Balal. Around 100 years after the drilling of the Boar, Camaril Paradim Nindar publicly announces her allegiance to the Shadow in her new name of Grendel. That same day, the first Trollocs are seen as they attack the city of Devale. This marks the beginning of the War of Power. In the first three years of the war, the art of war and waging war, which had largely been forgotten, is rediscovered and quickly learned by both sides. Trollocs appear in massive numbers at this time and surprise the forces of the light as city after city is ambushed and destroyed. Initially, the forces of the shadow take massive amounts of land and have victory after victory. The light was unprepared for the war, and because of this, the forces of the shadow had many victories in the first three years. It was in this time also that Balefire was rediscovered, and widely used for destruction on both sides, even destroying entire cities. Both sides stop using it, however, as it is discovered that the pattern could unravel and the world would be destroyed. The Sa Angrial Kalendor is constructed around this time, during the first couple years of the war. At the end of the third year of the war, one of the top generals in Luz Theron's army, and one of the more accomplished men in the world, Barad Bel Madar, joins the Shadow, defecting and becoming the Forsaken Demon Dread. This was a major blow to the forces of the light. In the fourth year of the war, another general in Luz Theron's army, Tel Janine Elinsar, defects to the Shadow while opening the gates to a city and allowing the Shadow to destroy that city. He then becomes the Forsaken Samael. This defection gives him the nickname Betrayer of Hope as the forces of light were already losing and it seemed like hope was lost. At this time, Luz Theron Telamon demonstrated why he was so widely respected. He manages to lead the forces of the light to retake much of the land that the Shadow had conquered pushing back the forces of the Shadow. This trend continues for another four years during the War of Power, with the Light taking back territory. During the ninth year of the war, neither side really advances and they solidify their positions. However, in year 10 of the war, the forces of the Shadow start a massive advance and begin to take land rapidly. Luz Theron is able to defeat Ishamayel at the gates of Parandisan, but the Shadow's onslaught is continuous. There are meetings to come up with ways to quickly end the war as the writing on the wall is seen by the forces of the Light. They believe they're going to lose soon. Luz Theron suggests a controversial plan to seal the boar using seven Quindiar seals. He wanted female Aes Sedai to partner with male Aes Sedai to place these seals accurately. La Tra Posse Decume, a female Aes Sedai of great influence, champions a plan to construct two extremely powerful Sa Angrial to build a shield around the boar until a better plan can be discovered. She manages to convince the Hall of Servants of her plan, and construction begins on the Chodian Call. She convinces all of the female Aes Sedai that Luz Theron's plan was too dangerous, and they sign what is called the Fateful Accord, which which essentially means none of the powerful women will support him. As they were completed, the location of the access keys for the Chodian Call was conquered by Samael, although he doesn't know this. Then the armies led by Demon Dread and Bilal threatened to take the actual Chodian Call statues. At this time, no territory occupied by the Shadow had been retaken by the forces of the Light in two years. Hope really begins to fade on the side of the Light as it becomes clear that the Shadow will be triumphant. 
riots break out in major cities, and the Hall of the Servants is destroyed by Bilal. People begin to demand negotiation with the Forsaken to end the war and lose confidence in their leaders. Just days after the destruction of the Hall of the Servants, feeling as though he has no options, Luz Theron Telamon leads a force of 10,000 men and 113 powerful male Aes Sedai to Sheol Ghul while the Forsaken were meeting with the Dark One. He manages to seal the boar and the Forsaken with it, trapping them with the Dark One. 45 of the 113 male Aes Sedai that traveled with Luz Theron are killed during the attempt, and massive casualties are inflicted on the men he brought with him. Despite the success, the remaining companions of Luz Theron Telamon and the dragon himself are instantly driven completely insane. They begin to use the One Power to destroy the world, killing people indiscriminately, and destroying not only cities, but transforming the land. This madness is due to the Dark One's counterstroke on Sidene, where he tainted the male half of the True Source. Because of their proximity to the Dark One, the Hundred Companions and Luz Theron were instantly driven insane. The taint did not have the same immediate effect on the rest of the male channelers of the world, but gradually drove them insane as well. During the time before the taint had taken hold of the vast vast majority of male channelers, the war against the Shadow actually continued after the sealing of the Boar. With the forces of Shadow greatly weakened now that the Dark One was sealed away along with the major leadership, the forces of the Shadow begin to turn on each other and they retreat. It is at this time though that the extent of the Taint's damage becomes clear. More and more male Aes Sedai succumb to the madness. Some take refuge in Ogier Steading to stave off channeling, but eventually they all go insane. This begins the breaking of the world. During this period, the male Aes Aes Sedai all over the planet begin to go completely insane and cause great geological upheaval and devastation on a global scale. Most remnants of the previous age and technological achievements are completely lost. During this time, a group of male and female Aes Sedai foreseeing the future create the Eye of the World, storing some artifacts and creating a totally untainted pool of Sidene. Also during this time, the Stone of Tear is created with the One Power, and Kalindor is hidden there in the heart of the stone. It is warded so none but the Dragon Reborn can pull it from its bonds. The ways were constructed and grown for the Ogier by the remaining sane male Aes Sedai as a gift. The breaking of the world progressively gets worse and worse, though, until there is no government, no organization, no technology, and humanity is on the brink of extinction. You might ask yourself how some insane channelers could cause this, but let me give you some perspective. If the population during the Age of Legends was 10 billion worldwide, which is really conservative given that today's population is only slightly lower than that, then there would have been somewhere between 50 and 150 million male Aes Sedai in the world. Think about 150 million insane male channelers loose in the world at the same time, given all of them could create mountains and destroy the land and destroy people. This is how the breaking of the world would go on to remake the world landscape. Oceans moved, mountain ranges were formed, land moved. It is estimated that the breaking of the world took as much is 350 years to finally complete before starting the third age. So that's the timeline of events from the Age of Legends through its fall. I hope you guys found the video interesting. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you did like the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I post more content. Also, big thank you to everyone over on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to support the channel and what we're doing here, please take a moment to check out my Patreon page and some of the cool rewards for your support. The link to the Patreon is in the description below. Hey guys, until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?